It's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. So, different um, backdrop, I suppose that's the different surface area anyway that I'm going to be um, working with today. I've had to move into a different part of the home because I'm going to be doing a little bit of crafting. It's a bank holiday and so um, I wanted to do, rather than just sit in front of the TV, which was appealing, um, I wanted to do something that I've uh, been meaning to do for quite some time. And that is, um, and I have shown videos in the past, I've shown videos where um, I've edged decks or I've trimmed decks, etc. Um, but it's been a while and I've never shown a process kind of all the way from start to finish. But I wanted to talk about this tarot, which is the Crystal Visions Tarot by Jennifer Galasso. And I've had it for a few years. And it's one of those tarot decks where somebody will mention the, the deck. And I think to myself, have I got that? Have I got that tarot? Um, because I often get it mixed up, like a few people do with the crystal tarot and other tarot decks with crystal in the title. Um, but I'm always reminded every time I see it just how beautiful this deck is. It is really gorgeous. Um, it's a vision through a crystal ball, a world looked upon through a crystal ball, hence uh, the title Crystal Visions Tarot. So then I got to thinking, well, if I'm always reminded about how beautiful this deck is, why is it that I don't, I don't use it? And, and the most recent experience of that was um, I did a video about Kelly Bear pouches and um, I watched Marsha from Moosings by Marsha talk about her Kelly Bear pouches and in it she showed the Crystal Visions Tarot and again I was like wow that looks beautiful what a beautiful looking deck this is just the title card which is or not title card it's about the author Jennifer Galasso She's a fantasy artist and illustrator uh, from New England. And um, again, I went and dug them out. Please forgive my awful thumbnail. It's got a um, new skin on it. It's a like a glue you put on because I had an accident with a knife. <laughs> Long story. So my thumb is a bit of a mess. But if I waited for that to heal, we might be waiting for some time. But the artwork in this deck is really beautiful there's lots of dragons lots of fantasy but the colors um are beautiful and i love it and i don't use it i mean i clearly i've used it because it's shuffled and i have worked with it but not not very um often or as often as i would like and then i realized because i quite like now i've got over the whole border borderless thing if a border's done nicely i quite like it but the US Games um, copyright is quite obnoxious. And when, <laughs> in my opinion, and when I my eyes have click, clicked onto it, I can't unsee it. And I find it quite distracting that it's there on every card. And it's not tiny. I've seen some copyrights where they're, they're tinier, but you know, this is 2011 US Games and it's, for me, it's a little bit distracting. So, I am going to take the borders off. I'm going to corner around it, and then I'm going to edge it. Now, I've had a guillotine for about three years that I got from Hobbycraft. It was about thirty pounds, quite a big one, but it didn't really have the markings and things on it, and the blade is starting to get a little bit. Um, it's making the edges a little bit ruffled. I have tried sharpening it with tin foil and things like that that is recommended. Um, but I've seen a few people using the Fiskars one. And so I bought a Fiskars guillotine. It's not been opened yet. I do like the ones with a lever kind of uh, blade um, rather than the slidey ones. Um, 
But yeah, this has clear kind of markings, like a ruler there. I do wish somebody would invent, and I've had a look, where you can move like a slider along. So when you put your card in place and you know exactly, I wish they'd invent this little slider that gets to the point and you can press it down and lock it into place. Why haven't they done that? <laughs> so I have a little bit of tape um, that I'll put there to try and use as a marker if it's not clear that it's dead on the five or, or something like that. So there's a little bit of tape. So that is that. And then I got one of these corner rounders. Now, Fiskars do do, do do, Simon said do do, um, one of these as well, but I couldn't get one. And I thought, well, this is just as, just as good. It has three sizes, small, medium, and large, which is three millimeters, five millimeters, or eight millimeters. Um, and the ones I've had previously um, tend to be, the ones where um, they're, they're single, you know, so you have to buy one that's three millimeters, five millimeters, and I had one that was 10 millimeters, which was a little bit too, too round. So I think eight millimeters, I'm thinking of eight millimeters on this deck would work. Mm, maybe five millimeters. The thing is, if you go big, you can't then go small. But if you go small, you can go large if you're not happy. Three millimeters is a little bit too small. So I think I will go with the medium setting on that. So that's the corner rounder. And then to edge, um, I've got this Windsor Newton Pro Marker. Now I like the Pro Markers. You can buy them in sets. So if there's just a particular color um, you want, then you can you can buy them individually as well of places like Amazon. So this is the Windsor & Newton Pro Marker and this is Rose Pink. So they have um, one end, if I can get it off. Oops, one end is pointy. Oops, and then the other end, which is what we're going to be using, is chisel tipped. So... I say we, me, <laughs> but I think it will go really nice with the backs because there's lots of pinks and purples. And I I was going to go with purple, but then I thought, actually, I don't have any pink edge decks. And I think that it will bring out the pink colour of these backs as well. And on the artwork as well, there's so many um, pinks in this deck. It's quite a prominent colour. There are other colours in there, but pink does feature quite heavily in the deck. So I think it will look really nice. Okay, so have I mentioned everything? I think I have. So I've got my deck, I've got my pen, my guillotine, my corner rounder, and oops, throwing it, tape if needed. So I think I'm good to go. So firstly, I'm just going to test on the a card that is you know it's not a not one of the uh the actual cards from the deck so this is the about the author so i want to try and line up where i think i think it's going to be there where i think the blade will go so that takes it to seven and a half dead on seven and a half at least for the first bit okay so it's took a nice, even strip. Um, yeah. And then I will do one at a time. I'm just lining it up because I want to check the, the corner rounder here to see if that is the right. So I'm going with the medium. I'm pressing it down. Mm, that's not quite got it. There we go. So that's the medium corner, and I think that looks okay. All right, so let's let's get going.
actually, just before we do uh, crack on. So this is what the back is going to look like. So this has all the borders taken off. And I think that's, that's quite nice. I mean, obviously what's happened is you get more of the cup and you can see a couple of the cups at the bottom here, which slightly, and I'm talking slightly off, but I think that looks quite nice. I can live with that. I'm happy, happy to proceed. Okay, this is the last card. I just wanted to explain, because you might have seen me there, kind of um, redoing some. So not all, what you have to be careful is, not all of the uh, measurements are exactly right. So you can see here, it's only slight, but that corner is close to the edge than that corner is. So sometimes when you do them, and I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little black border as well just inside the white one and um, I will slice the card and there'll still be a tiny little bit of black so that's what these are for you can just go back over and just take off those tiny little um black edges I'm trying to look where the camera is um so yeah so you have to be careful so the seven and a half might not measure up exactly right because it may leave no that's actually done it that one's hasn't been too bad it may leave a tiny little bit of um of black okay so that's one side done that's pretty pretty neat if i do say so myself um so yeah that's pretty smooth i'm happy with that um so what i'm going to do now you don't need to see me carry on um guillotine in a way is i'm gonna take off the other three sides and then i will come back when it's time to do the corner rounding okay so i know i said i'll be back when it's time to look at all this <laughs> this is all the debris it causes um i still got the bottom but i'm really impressed on how this is such a good I highly recommend this Fiskars guillotine. So good having the clear markers on it. I've not needed to use the tape, um, but they are nigh on perfect. Really, really smooth. So I've just got the bottoms to do now, but I'm loving this already. So with this, it's just a case of moving in place, sliding it to the position 11, and there you've got a perfect finished border. So move it in place, slide it to 11, and you can go quite quickly using this method. And once you've done a few, you get into a rhythm. Just have to make sure it's dead on so that every card, when it's finished, lines up and it's nice and smooth. So yeah, it's as easy as that and then you can quickly get through all 78 cards I actually like doing the last bit the last bit I always leave um, with the bottom Okay, so that is the guillotine part done. Um, I am really, really happy with how this has turned out. Oh, look at this deck. Will I be able to work with this now and connect with it more? Absolutely, it is, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And um, the edges are really sharp now. Oh, this is just smooth. So yeah, the edges are really, uh, uh, edges, corners, sorry, are really sharp. So what we need to do now is to use the uh, corner rounder. So I'm using the medium um, setting here. And yeah, I'll film for a little bit so you get the idea, but I'll just quickly show you. So you push it in as far as it will go. 
you have to be quite firm with it. I use the, the ball in my hand because if I'm using my, my thumb after 78, oh, so we're talking like um, th over 300 punches for a deck, aren't we? And there is the finished. Nice, smooth and nice corners. I think the, the medium setting, which is five millimetres, is perfect for for this. Okay, so that's the corner rounding done. Let's take out all the little, all the little bits. There's quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit of debris here. This is what we're missing from the deck, all this. Um, but the cards, you know, they're not, they're not tiny. These have come out so well. I, I love them. Now with the borders gone, Beautiful panels at the bottom. They're great. So all that remains now is to create some space so I can lay them all out and to begin the, the edging process using this Winsor & Newton Pro Marker Rose Pink, which I think will just set off the backs beautifully. All right, here we go, the last leg. Okay, so firstly, let's give you a, a demonstration. And I know I've shown this before on my channel. I just need a, a quick drink. It's actually thirsty work, really, this. Um, so far, I've been at it for about an hour. That's taken me an hour to, uh, to trim the deck on all four sides and then hole punch. So with your chisel tip, you hold the card with the backs facing you. That's because if there are any white areas on the image, you don't want any bleeding to show if there is any bleeding. And um, I ought to really try it on the test card first, but you, you do it away from you, uh, towards you, sorry, away from the front of the card, like that. Just make sure you get the corners because sometimes the corners tend to get mixed left. And then you can look to see if there is any bleeding. It's minimal. There is a very fine line of pink going around, but that is something that I, I can live with. So we can begin and it's just very gently. You don't need to press hard, just very gently over the edge, paying attention to those corners. I don't know if you can see, but the little corner there has been missed because of where you start up with. And then you lay it down to dry. And with Windsor & Newton, they're similar to Sharpies. They don't take um, a lot of time to dry, maybe 20 minutes, if that. So where these may show a little bit of bleed, might be on the titles, if there's um, the title banner at the bottom, if it's light, then it may it may show a little bit of bleeding. And this usually takes about 30 minutes 
to do all four sides of um, the cards within a tarot deck, 78 cards. It takes about 30 minutes, I find. This bit I find the most therapeutic, actually. I quite enjoy, quite enjoy doing this. And very often I'll just sit with a, a TV on or some music on and I'll do these at home while sitting on the sofa and laying the cards out next to me. So, yeah, that's how you, and already I've done six. This is the seventh one. So if you count, it probably takes about 20 seconds per card. And again, apologies for my disgusting thumb from my knife accident last week. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, so there they are drying. Oh, they look great. <laughs> um, no bleeding, so that's that's good. But it was good to try that out on the little test card anyway. So yeah, so that took about, it actually it took about 25 minutes. Um, but they're all laid out. I'm gonna leave them probably for about half an hour now. And then I will, gather them up and you can have a look at what they look like with their edges done. Okay, so here we have it. So all we need to do now is just check for any corners or anything that might still have some white bits on them. Now with this being, it's come out almost like a purpley pink, which is great uh, with the backs on these cards because they are a purpley pink. Um, colour anyway so I really like that I was going to go with watermelon but it wasn't quite right so I'm glad I went with the um, the rose pink um, in case I didn't show it earlier but I think I did there's the number and everything it's M727 rose pink which is part of the Windsor and Newton Pro Markers so I'm happy with these I'm happy the way they've turned out I like um, the backs and everything. Now it's just a case of going back into the front room, having a look through some bags that I've got. Uh, I might get a Kelly Bear pouch, which is, you know, if I can get one that's pink and purple would be perfect, but I'm sure I've got a bag to, to show this, but I'm really pleased how these have turned out. And the idea, as I said at the beginning was, I wasn't, it's a beautiful deck, but I wasn't using it. And I think it was because of the, uh, the copyright, but I can see me using this deck as so much, so much more. Now look at that. Really, really gorgeous. Gorgeous deck, gorgeous. There's the Hermit card. Yeah. So it's US Games and the card stock is, is really nice with US Games as well. So, and these are the backs which look lovely. So, reconnecting with an old deck after modifying. Um, and I get so many people say to me, I'd love to modify, but I'm just so frightened. Um, is this perfect? No, you know, but it's perfect for me. And it's pretty, 
pretty damn smooth and I'm happy with it. There are going to be a few little imperfections, like a little tiny bit of bleeding or something. But, you know, the idea is, I keep going out of shot, sorry. The idea is connecting with your deck. And if there's anything that's preventing you from connecting with the deck, then co-create, you know, that's how I see this. The artist has given um, a deck out into the world, but once it's ours, if there's something that we think we can do to make it, um, you know, improve it for us, and it's gonna be different for everybody. Some people really don't believe in, you know, that we should um, modify our decks, but I think if it's gonna make us work with it more and connect with it more, then go ahead and do it. I would say, um, perhaps if you are starting out, start out with a mass uh, market deck like this is. And then if you do um, mess up, you know, you can replace it pretty inexpensively. I think this sells for about anywhere between 15 and 20 pounds in, in the UK. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased in how it turned out. Um, I can't wait to start working with it. It's a nice size. Let me give you a, um, a size. Oops. So let's do it in inches. Oh no, most people use centimeters now, don't they? I've got to get with the modern world. Um, so starting it there, it is 11 centimeters in height and it is six centimeters across. So 11 by six um, now, which is a decent size. It's not a pocket deck just by taking off those borders by any stretch of the imagination. It's, um, it's a nice size deck. I've got huge hands, as you know, and it fits, fits nicely. It's probably the size of a Llewellyn, maybe Los Carabao deck. Because uh, US games do give, they are quite generous in their card size. So, yeah. All right. So, let's go and find a bag. Okay, so just to finish off, I've come through into the front room. Um, let's have a look. So, um, these have dried really nice. I like them. I think it looks lovely with the backs, as I said. So, on... Sunday, I did a couple of catch-up and cards and I showed a couple of bags that had been sent to me by Magda over at uh, Mystic Pal. One was this one, which is really beautiful. The cat and the crescent moon. Um, and then this one as well, which is the, the moon gazing hair, the little clouds. And I think this will be perfect. Um, I am also going to look out for a bag from Kelly Bear, because I think it'd be really nice to get a purple and pink bag, perhaps pink on the outside, because I don't have any Kelly Bear pouches that are pink on the outside, purple on the inside. Um, but this this one is beautiful as well. So for now, I think it will live in here and it should fit beautifully. And it does, look at that. I love these pouches, look at that little crescent moon and star so yeah there we go thank you for watching everybody um let me know if there's any decks that you have struggled to connect with for whatever reason and then you know once you've personalized it or modified it in a way that's to your taste how you find working with it since then i'd be interested to hear your thoughts and yeah show us some show us some decks that um you've modified you can post them in the Hermit's Cave Facebook group if you want to share pictures um, or just post some comments below. All right, everybody. Thank you. Um, I hope everybody's having a great bank holiday if you do have a holiday this weekend. And it's wet and it's cold here. So this was a perfect activity to do on days like this. Thanks for watching. Until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.